Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to have Tracy Lalonde, a broker associate with Powers Realty Group here in our studio today, which is our office. And I feel like Tracy's probably one of the most exciting people to talk to in residential real estate. She's going to give you a lot of entertainment today. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this, Tracy. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited you're here today. I wanted to interview you for a long time because I don't think a lot of people know your story. We've known each other a long time. People might be surprised to know that since our kids were babies before they were even born. Right. So tell everybody out in the audience a little bit about how you became the queen of condos, luxury <laughs> condos in Port Washington, Wisconsin. Well, um, I, I didn't set out to be the queen of condos at all. I think what happened is I'm really into development. I think you know that. That's always been... I definitely love residential because that is, that's just something we do every single day. But I think I've always thought, where, what other arm of, res, of real estate can I get into? And what do I like? And we had already, you know, been flipping and doing stuff long ago. So I'm very into what is going on in my community. And I live in Cedarburg. So when I... In reading the local paper, I figured out, oh, there's all these developments. I, I watch every development. This particular development had been going on a long time. There was a lot of talk about it. And everything fell into place because ANSE did a lot of public awareness about the project. They are very um, in tune with community and they wanted to make sure that it was a good project for them, but also like a great project for Port Washington. So in doing that, they had a lot of like open meetings. They had um, uh, like come to, you know, Newport Shores and then meet the contractors. So I could meet everyone from, you know, uh, the architect to you know who's going to general it and all of that so it was just like a really great opportunity so I just um I always drag my husband <laughs> I'm like come with me because he was kind of like the decoy for me in a lot of ways because I'm like oh he's a road builder like we're just we're just randomly curious because um at that time they were even talking to other realtors I wasn't even really on their radar but I just kept once I met Ian McCain, who was kind of spearheading the project at that time and kind of community awareness, I just infiltrated him and sent him like little notes and that was great. And then I, I you know, would constantly send him postcards and I just like started meeting with, or meeting a few other people and I just wanted to keep on the radar. And when the time came, when they were really serious about interviewing agents, I got a call. And that's when you and I kind of went in there and we had a plan, which I think that was the, the nail in the coffin as far as like us getting the job. Because we came in as a team, we said we're going to approach it as a team, and we really had our act together and we had a clear plan of marketing, which then led into, I don't want to call me the queen of condos, but it led into a really <laughs> successful um, like listing campaign and then selling of, you know, we basically marketed and we got it done. And I say we, because it, something like that can't be done in my mind with just one real estate agent that isn't, that isn't going to work for a, a huge development like that. You really need a team to get it done. Tracy's being too humble. Uh, she is, uh, a female broker associate who has successfully sold the most successful condo project in Wisconsin state history, Newport Shores, and that's what we're talking about here. And she pretty much single-handedly did it herself. I provided marketing, but you really were the wind beneath the wings of the Newport Shores success. So why don't you tell everybody about how in the world did you do that? How many condos were in that project? Initially, well, it, it started, they thought maybe even in the 30s. It ended up being a solid 30 condos. Um, 
I did end up selling two condos at the same time and they put them together. And so it actually ended up the building being 29 condos. And um, yeah, 29 condos. And I think probably about two, about two and a half, almost three years it was sold out. But it, I mean- From zero to a hundred though. Yes. I mean, what, a year and a half of that, there was no building at all? There was no building. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that- And was, how much of that did you sell out air? I um, mean, how much of that did you sell well, out when we there was were, nothing? When there was nothing, we sold when there was absolutely nothing. Strictly air, I had 11 under contract out wow. of the 30, air. Once they started building, but we still didn't have, I mean, basically they took the building down. They were starting to pour concrete. We still didn't have anything I could even show outside of, yes, this is actually happening. Once they broke ground, I was able to get seven more under contract, I would say within three or four months. So it went really, really quickly after we broke ground. And then um, before I knew it, by the time the building was s completely done, it took about 12 months, we had another 11, I think, under contract. So I doubled it in a year. Um, and then, you know, the last eight took about eight months. So I was selling about one a month after that. Wow, fantastic. I mean, and now you, do you feel like you've sown enough experience together to develop other things because you're starting to develop other other projects which I, I think just makes you unique you know women women developers are very rare in general in the united states you know i think it's less than one percent of women are actually real estate developers but you're developing all sorts of things all over this state tell people a little bit about that um well what got me into real estate, and you you know this, I my husband had property when I married him. I would give him a lot of the credit, but as just to stay home and take care of my kids, I'm a mom of four, and in order to do that, we had to supplement our income. We bought properties, and I took care of all those. That turned into, you know, oh, let's buy this property and maybe flip it. Because at that time in the early 2000s, um, and then re after 2007, there were a lot of uh, foreclosures. And it wasn't like it is now. People didn't know about that because there wasn't the social media to educate people and teach people. But I mean, I happen to be married to someone who just had the ins and outs and he could figure out, I mean, he found out properties just having a drink at the bar basically and he <laughs> <laughs> I know that's a Wisconsin that's thing like yeah, how, right? how did you find how out Wisconsin that building is? was for sale well I heard someone talking about it at a bar you yeah. know so we developed our properties I would say that way and we we didn't have a lot of money so I mean I think our my husband's first property was like fifty thousand dollars, and then you know he maybe his next was like a hundred and ten thousand. He you know so we he kept buying distressed properties, and his idea was never to sell it. It was always just to keep it and then r fix it up and rent it. So that's what we did the majority of the time. So that's kind of my backstory, and I just realized like I loved that part of real estate. It I like taking something old and making it better. And I always wanted to sell and then like, oh, let's get the money, you right. know, because <laughs> who doesn't want a big chunk of money? My husband was like, never, he never wants to sell. He's a little bit of a hoarder. So as all of a sudden he's like, oh no, we're not gonna sell this, we're gonna keep this. And so I was like, are you kidding me? We just broke the bank. Like our, you know, entire savings went down to nothing to fix this up in order to sell it. And now he wants to keep it. Well, over 20 plus years, that was actually a really great strategy because now we have a really nice portfolio oh. and of properties that, you know, I want to continue to build that portfolio. So long, that was the long version to get to this point in building our portfolio, what do you do? Well, we need to buy more properties. Well, <laughs> that's much easier said than done at this time. There's no properties to buy. And I just looked at a property a day ago, I contacted the bank and I was like, hey, I wouldn't mind buying this and the bank won't even give us money for it because they're like, it doesn't, it, the numbers don't work. 
and nothing. So we already knew that. We already knew the numbers didn't work. Um, but that's the, the case in a lot of these properties. The numbers are not working to buy properties. And so what we're doing is buying raw land. We're getting old buildings. Um, we're doing all of this like kind of back alley transactions in order to develop, you know, and create our own inventory. So I think um, the audience might be really interested to that. One of the most fascinating things about, well, there's two fascinating things, but the first one is your success with trailer parks. We have to talk about that because <laughs> it, it, you're, you're, You'd have to know Tracy to understand her persona. It's a perfect fit. Tell people a little bit. I mean, trailer parks isn't like a status quo kind of a real estate investment for 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 anybody. No. Again, um, <laughs> it was not my that like that wasn't what we set out to do or to look at. I was like, no way. I do not want a trailer park. We're not <laughs> buying a trailer park. That's ridiculous. And I want to say like 10 years ago, my husband found a trailer park. It's teeny tiny and it's in Kenosha County. And he was like, I'm going to buy this trailer park. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> Good <boy. for> Mike. <laughs> I know. And he's like, that's my dream. That's my dream. And why is it his dream? Of course, everything in our life goes back to a memory or whatever. And that was his, his grandpa had a tra lived in a trailer park in Brownsville, Texas when he was little Aww. and his parents, one of the, they would always drive down there and do like a family trip. And then he goes, I had so much fun in that trailer park. My brothers and I would like be riding our bikes around and he loved it. So he always wanted one and I was not into it, but again, he managed to you know, change my mind and make me realize geez, that actually is a really great investment. We own all of the trailers, many tra there's like a couple different, you know, models for trailer parks. Now I would like to find a trailer park that I don't own any of them because it's less work. And then you just get paid for the rent and all of that for the land. Um, but that's not easy to find either. Um, there's a lot of trailer parks for sale, not necessarily in Wisconsin. It's just, it's a little bit harder. Um, but we happen to own all the trailers in our trailer park. So, you know, he, he's, he was just down there yesterday because one of the trailers pipes burst <laughs> <laughs> and he's down there fixing, fixing it up and he came home and he goes, Ooh, it, it might be a total loss. <laughs> Thank goodness there was no one living in that one. It was the the vacant one, which is why I'm sure the pipes burst because he's so cheap he didn't turn any heat on or anything. He's like, ooh, not good, not good. How so did, so how again, did... just another arm of like real estate and, and what a lot of people don't know is it's a commercial property if you buy it as a whole, but it's not... You're not going to find, like, that's another thing. You have to go searching. I call it back alley transaction just by the fact that you have to, like, meet someone in a, wait, tell me about this property. Because it's not something that, I mean, it requires work. Right. You can't find it on the MLS or, and it's, or LoopNet or anything like that. You're, yes. it's basically relationship built kind of transactions. Yes. And there's specific dealers out there, you know, commercial realtors, that, that's all they do. And um, those are the people you have to like find and hope that they'll share with you. But I mean, I'm going to be real honest. I'm a woman in that it's pretty male dominated. And imagine that I've, I have what I thought I was building relationships with people, but they're not coming to me when they have something good. They're going to their longstanding, you know, the, the buyers that have probably bought, you know, 10 trailer parts from them. So it isn't an easy thing to break into. Um, it requires a lot of work, which a lot of people don't know. It's a great investment. And I would say certainly look into it. But every single month, my husband drives to Kenosha and he goes door to door to get the rent. 
Oh, it's not something. Oh, that's really interesting. You know, they're that's not doing something. They're else. not. Wow. They may not have a checking account. They may not oh, have. Gotcha. You know, yep. things, normal ways to get you what you need. So he just makes it easy on everyone. Wow. And it's a good way for him to go and like, how is everything going everything, down here? Right? And I've been there with him while he's done that. And I don't go a lot. And I'm like, ooh. This is a good job for him. <laughs> Two luxury agents talking about trailer parks and female to boot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's real estate, right? Real estate right. is real estate. And it I sure think is. You have to kind of figure it out. And that is all just like a big education process, too. And the more fun. we know, right? And fun. Yeah. So you have a new project going on. Yes. One that we're part of. I'm very excited. Um, do you want to talk about that new project? I don't want to be a spoiler or anything. No, no, no. I think this is a perfect time to talk about Great. it. Great. So, um, we, when I say we, my husband and I, we own, um, some property in Mequon and we didn't end up buying it all at the same time. The, there's three properties that are parcels that are um, in Mequon in a great location, right on Mequon Road between Green Bay Road and uh, 76. So um, we're on the north side of the road and we had the opportunity a long time ago to buy one of the parcels, then another parcel came up with a house, we bought that, and then in 2020 we bought a third parcel. All the parcels together equal about five acres. So we kind of have our own little community right there in a great location. The last parcel that we bought actually had a business on it. Um, so it had a residential house and then um, it was called the wood shop. And a lot of people might still see the sign. Oh. We never took it down. And um, the owner, the previous owner that ran his business out of there. And in order to do that, he had to get a conditional use permit. It's, you know, B3 unlimited or limited, excuse me, zoning. So We've had a vacant building, and it's a pretty decent building. It's just sitting there for now going, well, three years for sure. Um, four years, because we closed in December of 2020. So it's like, what are we going to do with this building? It's sitting here. We knew in the state it was in. We had to put some money into it. What, that really wasn't the issue. Um, we just didn't know what we wanted to do. Did we want to break it into residential and just use it as another rental? Um, which we could have, it just wouldn't have had a garage, um, which would have kind of gone with everything. But in doing that, um, we would have lost our commercial uh, zoning on it. And I just, I don't know. I didn't want to give that up. Yeah. Because you I, never you, know. You don't want to give that up. I mean, I had a hard time turning this residential property into commercial that we're sitting into today. I mean... Right. No, you don't want to give that up. Yeah, no. I didn't want to give that up. So, you know, it's been because I haven't thought of anything that I wanted to do. I, it just has been sitting there. And it's um, finally, and I would have to say maybe you gave me a little insight on it because you have been renting in <sighs> Mequon, right? Yeah. And commercial space. <gasps> what a space. terrible experience yeah. that was. Yeah. And... It, but it showed me, you, and then also we have a, a friend that he has, um, he just needed two office spaces. He didn't need a big yeah, space. a drop down. Yeah. He needed somewhere where he could get out of his house. Um, and he's an actuary. So he's like, I need, and then I need a place for like my team to come. So one or two offices is all I need. I don't want to pay triple net. I don't want a three-year lease. Right. I don't want a five-year lease. I don't want a 10-year lease. I don't want a big space because I don't need it. So uh, it made me think, you know, there's nothing in Mequon where you can just rent an actual office. And you can rent it on a yearly basis, on a monthly lease, and have like a little drop zone and not have to worry about all this triple net and all of those types of things. So I just was like, you know what? I'm going to build some office space and I'm going to do a community office. And it's called um, LL Suite, which or double L Suites, which is la, for Lalande. 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 I know my Lalande. husband's like, where'd you get that name? I'm like, <laughs> it's our name. What are you talking about? I mean, <laughs> so it's actually LL Business Suites. Oh, wonderful. And then there's going to be five offices in there. There's also a um, conference room, a little kitchen area, community bathroom, and then a lobby. 
And then we're also doing um, a little patio out back. So it's going to be super cute Aww. in the summer. Like you can sit out there if someone is working, they can take their laptop out there or whatever and just kind of get some fresh air. Or if you're having a little meeting, you could always just do it out on the patio. So it's going to be really cute. And um, we're hoping to have it done. I just stopped there today. All the dry, our, all the um, insulation and walls are up. We just, I met with a drywaller that should be drywalled in a couple weeks. So now I cannot wait to put powers in Mequon and Tracy's new office. Yes, and I so, love that for us. Oh, I do too. Tell I do them too. About it's that. tell them about oh, you tell them about it. I I will never. I don't think I'll ever lease again. Leasing has been such a terrible experience in the commercial mm -hmm. world. I owned our building in Wauwatosa, and I own, of course, this building in Shorewood. I just wow. If you don't own it and I don't own it, I'm not going in. But, I, you know, I'm really happy to be the first leasee. Yeah. I mean. And you being my leaseor. So there's a little role yeah. reversal there. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. Uh, really looking forward to it. I think it's really nice for our clients, too, because mm -hmm. we do do a lot in Menominee Falls and Germantown and even Brookfield. And I feel like there are no real estate offices on the west side of Mequon. We're really close to the public market in Concord Creek. It's the perfect place for us to have an office for Powers. I'm I'm really excited to be leasing that space from you. Yeah, it's going to be great. It's um, you know what I love. We're going to have like a little. We'll have our sign, and it's right on yep. Mequon Road. And I and think we it's, built it. Yeah. A bunch of girls. I know. Developing and, land. Woo. And I, I love the idea, too, because whoever rents it from it from us, people's life change. You know? Right. If they, they'll have a lease, but, you know, if they need 60-day notice or something, we'll, we're, 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 it's just, you, life changes for people. I think, I would say with all of my developments or real estate or properties that we own, not everyone, people who are renting are renting for a reason. And, right. you know, life it's changes true. happen right. and all of that. And I think that's why also I like real estate so much because I think it, A, offers the opportunity for people to really succeed. I mean, you and I, you came from a good old Fond du Lac I did. I'm very proud a, of my, I'm proud of my blue collar town. I know. And I came I from a teeny. Proud. I know. And you from Stevens Point. I know. It's such a like small little, and, but look at, look at where, I mean, if you would have told me, like when we first met, we didn't even have children then. Like, oh right. yeah, we're going to be sitting here. Right. Oh and my gosh. Like I you would have been that. like, what are you talking no. about? Like I'm killing it in, you know, right. medical sales. Like, and I'm like, oh, I don't even know what I'm doing basically. I don't think you have ever <laughs> not known what you're doing. Yeah, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. I would not say that about you. But the future is bright. So what do you have on the horizon? Um, everybody sh out there should know that Tracy um, in 2023 was the number one sales agent for um, Ozaki County. I think that's really important because how long have you been in real estate? To become number one is a big deal. I think you were number one two years in a row with Newport Shores development and then all your, your residential real estate sales. So I think <clears throat> this is my seventh year, 2014. That's rare. So six, seven, going into my eighth year. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so I think I got it. Uh, it's 2016. Fifth and six, so, so it was four. Yeah. I mean, going into my eighth year. Wow. So what advice do you have for real estate agents out there? I mean, I think you're a real go-getter. I mean, just so everybody knows, Tracy brought me the proposal for Newport Shores. Then we developed a plan for her, and I just let her run with it. Um, now I pretty much let her run with everything because she's so advancedly competent, much more than I am in some areas. Um, so what's on the horizon for you? The future's bright, obviously. Well, I mean, I, it was clearly residential. I mean, I'm not, even though I'm doing other things, I mean even sitting here is something that I haven't done before. You know, I'm doing other things. 
residential is really first and foremost. It's Bread at the and butter. Yep. It's at the front of all, everything I do every day. That's what I'm focused on. However, I don't know. I, 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 I break off into other things because it's just what like, you do. Yeah. It's who you are. Yeah. So and you're really good at it. If you haven't seen one of Tracy's remodeled houses, it's absolutely stunning. She's one of the best stagers I've ever seen. Color match par excellence. Thank you. It's true. Thank you. Yeah. And so I'm doing, you know, another project, condos. Oh. And that's in Slinger. Oh, Slinger near Fond du Lac. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. So um, that. What kind of condos? It's going to be really cool. They're like a modern industrial condo. Oh, neat. Backstory on that is um, Slinger had a rundown property. It did have a little um, like contamination on the soil, which I don't want to freak anyone out with that because in order for any property any to property. be able to be developed or, or something, you know, <laughs> this particular property has an organ factory from 1890. So if something, if there's a standing building from 18 early 1900s, it's going to have some sort of contamination. They just didn't know what to do. It's very minimal contamination. Nothing had to be excavated or anything like that. But in order for the um, county to get rid of that building, they have to run it through everyone. And um, in soil testing, a little yep. bit came up. So what we had to do or what we're going to do as we move forward is it just has to be capped, meaning um, there's not going to be any grass on it. It's only an acre lot. There's no room for grass once you put condos in a parking lot anyway. Yep. So yeah. um, it's just a matter of capping that, which by that I mean paving it. And um, that's it. So we're, we're working on that. And then the four condos inside, there's going to be two, two bedrooms in a den and then two one bedrooms in a den. Oh, how fabulous. And they're super industrial? neat. Wait a minute. So you're going to build industrial condos that you can live in? Yeah. Well, well, it's, I call it industrial, and I'm just saying that's more the motif. Oh, got it. Okay. So Understood. And I use it because it is an industrial site. Um, but this is really weird. In Slinger, it's literally in the middle of um, a residential neighborhood. It's right by the fire department, is that's across the street and the new library, those two things were just built. So it's kind of back off the main street and um, we, we had to do a lot of demo. We took down two buildings um, or a second building. We took down the back of this initial building just because over a hundred years, many things had been added onto it. And we just kept the core building and then that building, we're going to have the two sides where there's, um, you know, the condos. And they're going to have the tall ceilings. Um, nice. I'm, I actually have several doors from inside the um, property that we're just going to refurbish and we're using for the um, barn doors for the den areas. So we're going to try and bring in a little bit of that cool factor from that was originally there. Um, but because of the... Um, soil that we're going to cap that. And so we're going to have this really nice parking lot. Um, I just said to my husband, I really want to put a pickleball court there. A pickleball court with industrial condos. Well, you know, it's going to be wildly successful. When is that projected to be done? Well, um, we are hoping, um, we're just waiting on our, what is it? Oh, sprinkler. Uh, pr plan to get approved oh. by the state. Yep. So it's going to have sprinklers. So um, as soon as that comes back, which I wish it would be any day, but I have no idea, I would say in the next four weeks, we can really start going and building it. And then it should be ready. You know, the goal is by May where you can actually move in. So where the exterior is pretty much done, we're just waiting now to get everything going on the inside. Awesome. I know. Well, everybody, that's a little snapshot on Tracy Lalon, trailer park, condo extraordinaire, salesperson. Look for her new office on Mequon Road, just beyond the public market, and her industrial condos in Slinger. Tracy, thank you. Thank you. For joining us today. Have a wonderful time at the Bucks game tonight. I will. <laughs>